Hello and welcome to the first of many special videos about the Breeders' Cup. This one focusing on international shippers we want to see. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornatel, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker. Once again, joined by two people I always turn to when it comes to matters of international racing. And we will start with a man who was just on talking to us about uh, Arc Day. And that was a fun conversation. Great analysis, even if it didn't play out perfectly <laughs> on the track. But he's given out many, many winners on these airwaves before from Dubai. It's Michael Adolfson. Michael, how are you? Doing all right. Arc Day was more of a very dark day for me. Um, all the all the luck I, and the money I made last year on the soft going, it did not enjoy this past week. Um, it did not play forward. So hoping for better luck going forward, especially in a few weeks in Santa, at Santa Rita. We did have another analyst talking about uh, Arc Day who had uh, had a bit more success on Horse Player <laughs> Happy Hour. We bring her in now, my colleague from uh, Sky Sports Racing and elsewhere, Vanessa Ryle. Vanessa, what did you think of uh, – you... quick thought on the Arc Day before we uh, proceed here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I did I have – I don't know. I've sort of flagged up a few horses to follow, I think, more so than anything on Arc Day. And, yeah, a few of them went in. One of them is going to get a mention on this show. I won't give it away. We're going to do, like, a countdown situation. Yes. Um, but in terms of Arc Day, obviously, for us over here in Europe, that was one of our big days of the flat racing calendar, let alone the autumn time that we're in now. But now the second biggest sort of race weekend comes for us when they all ship over to Santa Anita for the Breeders Cup and of course that's what we're going to be talking about on this show so we move from one wonderful circus to another basically <laughs> that's about that's about the size of it Michael we'll start with you we'll go from uh, your we'll do like a top five countdown with an honorable mention here starting with uh your, your five and going up to one which okay. horse uh, let's get to this list of horses you're really looking forward to seeing run at the Breeders' Cup. Where shall we begin? Number five, I'm going to go with Le Pavot, um, who ran a very nice third in the Primar Boussac last week on Sunday. Uh, just very impressed with her her progression in general. Um, her her win at Deauville before before this race was was very very good. Um, I thought her she really caught my eye. Two races, or a race before that, in a listed race at Vichy, where she was impressive um, and just showed a lot of a great constitution. I just think that she did run into a bit of a monster, but she ran into a monster, uh, who, an opera singer who had things her own way that day. And the racing at Santa Anita is going to be very different. And she's going to get the pace she needs in front. And she's got a nice kick on her. And I hope that Mikhail keeps the ride. And um, she's one that I think comes in with an immense amount of value. And you know, I love my value plays. And um, she's going to be overlooked, and I'm hoping that Craig and team send her over. We always love to root for uh, Craig Burnick and Glen Hill Farm, top-class operation at home and abroad, and one I'd love to see too. Vanessa, let's bring you in for uh, the first horse you want to talk about on the show. Can I just put in like a little statement from – Michael's first horse, just because it's very topical, because it's obviously Tattersall's book one, the sales over here at the moment, and it rained the other day, and I ended up finding myself hiding for cover uh, <laughs> with uh, Henri Graffin, who was talking about his Arc Weekend runners, and he, ha he had eight runners over the weekend. And that filly that Michael's talking about was much the best of them. He had a bit of a disappointing Arc Weekend in the group races, and he was just reflecting on that. But he spoke very highly and very, um, yeah, promisingly about that filly. So, just as a side note to Michael's first selection, nice. but we'll move on to my number five spot, which goes the way of again. I think we lean into recency bias with these sort of things when we're asked to put a list together but I like Michael have gone with a horse that we saw quite recently with Porta Fortuna in the Phillies well the juvenile Phillies turf for Donica and a well for Donica O'Brien for team O'Brien but Donica this time and for US owners and friends of the show in medallion racing she's just been such a solid 
uh, Philly so far this season. Um, they pre her winning the Cheveley Park, the Group One, when we last saw her over a shorter trip than we'll see her at in the Phillies turf, the juvenile Phillies turf. Um, they were already talking about bringing her over for the Breeders' Cup. It's an obvious thing for her to have on, a, on her agenda, given the fact that she's owned by an American syndicate. Uh, so that was very much always the plan. They're aiming her at a 1,000 guineas next season. But in the meantime, they think that if she is going to step up to the mile trip, she's going to be able to get it at Santa Anita and, of course, meditate for Donica's dad, Aiden, finished second in the Cheveley Park and then went on to win the Juvenile Phillies Turf. It's um, a path that they have as a family they know well. And I just think she's very much, for me, one of the more solid two-year-old performers over here in the UK and Ireland, given what she's done this season. She won at Royal Ascot. She's gone in against the boys in the past uh, in Ireland. And then she came over and won probably not a vintage renewal of the Cheveley Park, but she could only win it in the style she won it in. And now Santa Anita is going to be her next stop. Love and the then, American uh, ownership connections in these first two. The form I'm showing, by the way, from attheraces.com. I'll be having a bunch of Breeders' Cup coverage up there. But the form is a terrific way to get oriented to these uh, to these horses and, and to do some work on uh, one's own, in addition to all the stuff you're going to pick up here and elsewhere about this, uh, this foreign contingent. Michael, we bring it back to you. And um, real quick before I move on to my number four, I will say that, like, one of my favorite things to for people who aren't uh, as keen on it or don't know it as well, but one of my favorite things about Santa Anita and Del Mar Breeders' Cups is to, uh, for Europeans is to really look at the stiff six and seven furlong fillies um, and colts for the two-year-olds. I just think that they it translates a whole lot better over to Santa Anita and the really quick mile they're going to get there. And you're going to see some really speedy pedigrees like Le Pavot is a no-name never out of an oasis dream. She's going to love every step of the firm ground there. And Le Pavo means Le Pavo means poppies apparently. So hopefully she's the heroine of the day. Uh. <laughs> um, moving on next to my number four, I'm going to um, go with an O'Brien as well. Uh, uh, a, filly, a, a filly that's been a bit overlooked in warm heart right now. She's kind of doesn't have as much recency. Um, she's you know ran four weeks ago. Uh, I'm so I was so impressed with her when I was at York and she won the Yorkshire Oaks and that race has turned out to be a, a bit of a key race and it was a very good race in its own right. Um, she came back and won the Prix Vermeil and what I really love about her is that she kind of reminds me of Magical a bit. She's not quite to that level yet, but she's just tough and she kind of waits on horses a little bit. She pins her ears and puts them away again and I don't think we've seen how good she is and if they decide to run her in the 10 furlongs, cutting her back. I think she's going to be very, very tough to beat in the Philly Mary turf. Vanessa, who, where shall we go next? Well, that's a bit of a curveball for me because, of course, I should have concentrated a little bit more in the preamble because Warm Heart is one of mine. We can, uh, we, we can double up. Why not? Let's leave Let's leave it here. <laughs> give, your, give your case. All right. Well, she can go in my number four slot as well. I won't repeat what Michael's already said in regards to what she's done over here, but she is one of those horses that I think I'd, I'd, she's not like right at the top of everyone's list as the big breeders cup hope put it that way and there's other horses that are which i will get to in due course specifically from aiden's yard and i agree with what michael said in regards to her options trip wise um she's she's just a really solid option basically and she's improved so much this season she's had plenty of racing and she's a definite for coming over so that makes her a very attractive horse to focus in on at this point anyway, because, you know, we want to talk about horses who are definitely going to show up. Well, and we've seen over the years that sometimes it's the, it's not necessarily the, the, the Euro that people are completely focused on. That's the, that, that's going to win so much as one that just makes a lot of sense and, and fits where you actually get the, the wagering value. So, so maybe that'll yeah. be the case with a runner like warm heart. Vanessa, since we sort of stole that one from you, we'll, we'll flip, our order here and we'll, we'll let you start off with with your your third horse that you want to speak about okay well i'm going to go in with a charlie appleby horse with master of the seas um who has been on a few foreign missions 
recently in, in, in his career, his somewhat checkered career. He recently won the Woodbine Mile, which is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Mile. Um, again, he's not he's not right up at the top of the betting for a race like the Breeders' Cup Mile, which I think from a European point of view will be headed at the moment by Paddington for the Aidan O'Brien Yard. Not sure if, if he's a definite to be on the boat. I think he will be, but... Um, focusing in on Master of the Seas, Charlie Appleby hasn't had um, a vintage season. That has been well documented. Pretty good strike rate remains, but no wins at the highest level since over here in Europe anyway. Uh, over here in the UK and Ireland, I should say, since back in May. Very unheard of for him. Um, but this Master of the Seas is a talented but quirky individual. Um, he goes well really fresh. He's won off a break many times, as you can actually see in that exact screen share we're looking at now. Obviously, the At The Races website highlights how long a breaks these horses have had. And you can see that in recent times, this older horse has had has an excellent record off a break. So um, I predict that he'll be heading straight there from the Woodbine Mile to the Breeders' Cup Mile. Um, and like I say, although he's not straightforward, he can travel. He has ticked that box plenty already. And he has got a lot of speed and ability for a track like Santa Anita. But he wears a hood. He's been tricky in the prelims beforehand. He's already gelded. He can get upset. There are some negatives about him. But given Charlie Appleby's record at the Breeders' Cup for the Godolphin team, I just think this year, combined... You know, he's, he's not had a vintage year as a trainer. And normally he'll be coming over to the Breeders' Cup with loads of horses that we're talking about. And this year just isn't the case. But it doesn't mean that he's not going to fire some very, um, some some pretty big bullets. And Master as the Seas in, a, in the Breeders' Cup mile, which is a race he's got a good record in as a trainer, would be well up there, I think, with one of his better chances if he gets there and he's in the right frame of mind, which is going to be crucial. Well, you mentioned about going well fresh, and he does have an entry this weekend at Keeneland um, in in the, in the the what is it now? It's the Coolmore Turf Mile now. It'll be interesting to see if he if he does uh, if he does proceed to go there. Michael, you have any info as Master of the Seas definitely planning on running this weekend? I haven't heard one way or the other, but Charlie usually doesn't enter unless he's pretty serious about the run um, or if he's just inspecting whether or not the horse is going to get any ground. One thing I think that just to touch on Master of the Seas, it's interesting to me is that, uh, or at least a, a warning to people is I, I, I warn people not to put him into the same boat or the same category as modern games. Um, mm -hmm. Because on and on every metric, he's two or three lengths slower than modern games. Um, and I, I, this field might be slower. I, it is not actually, but, uh, but you know, it, it might end up that way, but I think it'll be, if he wins, I don't think it'll be nearly as impressive. Would you would you lose interest in him at all, Vanessa, if were he to run this weekend, or um, you would just take that as another data point and reevaluate moving forward? I wouldn't lose interest in him, but I would reevaluate. I th I was hoping and still kind of hope that he is going to go to the Breeders' Cup off the back of the Woodbine Mile win. But it's interesting that you know Michael flags up that angle that they're not exactly people who are like you know putting in entries if they're not going to run. But I had heard that he was going to go there fresh. So it's interesting. It is interesting, but we'll see. Info. We'll see how it uh, plays out. Michael, let's you let's bring you in to talk about your next runner. Are we up to most enough? Did I guess that correctly? We are. We are. We are up to most enough. Um, I, 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 I've grown to love this horse. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just think he's – when I was at York for Ebor and, and the Judmont, I was just so impressed with him. Um that day, he just, it was obviously a, a brilliant ride by Frankie uh, that day, but, and he'll get Jim back for the Breeders' Cup most likely. But I just see this horse as very, even with Auguste Rodin or, and even with um, uh, possibly Rebels Romance in there and so, some other superstars in the, in what's going to be a fairly epic Breeders' Cup turf. I just, if he's on, he's, if he's square with everyone turning for home and has clear sailing, I don't think anyone's going to touch him. I just think he's got a just a hell of a kick, uh, and ever since I saw him run in Riyadh, and the way he cornered around that tight bend and turned for home and buried them, I've been waiting for Santa Anita with this horse, and I'm praying that everything goes smoothly and he ends up going. What kind of prices are we looking at now? Have you looked, Michael? Knowing you, you've looked. 
Uh, let me see the updates real fast. <laughs> um, well, I can talk about my next one because it's in the let, same race. So he can give us that. Let's do that. Let's do that and then we'll bring one. Where, where I, we? I'm flagging up next bet for my are we what what slot are we in now? Number two is yeah. August Rodan for me. Um, in the same race that Mostadaf will run in the Longines turf, which I like Michael think is could has the potential to be a, a, a really top class renewal specifically for us Euros. <laughs> Um, obviously, we last saw August Rodin win at Leopardstown, the Irish champion stakes. And then they were talking about him going straight to America off the back of that. Um, I think they think that the way the race in America might play out in terms of a strong pace and the way in which this horse travels will really suit him he's sort of been documented that he doesn't do a huge amount when he gets to the front but i suppose what's been even more documented is how he's flopped a couple of times when he's traveled now we've spoken about it peter between ourselves on podcast previously about the worry in terms of traveling all the way to the breeders cup he has traveled to the uk and won races but he's also traveled to the uk and disappointed then he bounces back in the irish champion stakes and now we've got this big like the one of the big journalist questions will be how did august redan travel and how's he settled in but what is a worry for me is when he disappointed in the king george and that race was just so bad it was nowhere near true if you see what i mean you know he literally trotted home um is they claimed that beforehand there was no signs of the flop. So I imagine what will happen is it'll be all, everyone's happy. Yes, he's travelled fine. Yes, he's settled in fine. And then we'll find out when the gates open. But he's a horse that they speak so highly of. I totally understand. I'm I'm almost not putting him up against Michael's selection in Mostadaf because I think he's a more, Mostadaf is a more solid option given what he's done abroad before. And then what Michael touched upon there in Mostadaf's ability to kick off a pace in the way in which he does is just like very few horses can do that. Um, but August Rodin is spoken about by somebody like Aidan O'Brien in this like almost different worldly way. And they have so much confidence in him. I'm almost, I'm not almost tipping him up as the selection, but as an interesting shipper and a top in a top five list, he has to rank very highly because of everything I've just said. It's, it's just going to be so much intrigue around August Rodin. Remember, this isn't necessarily a best bet. This isn't a best bets list. It's a horses we're looking forward to seeing. We'll have plenty of time as we get closer to get actual selections from everybody. But, Michael, where are those two in the market as of right now? They're going head and head. Um, they're both at seven to two, um, four to one best for both of them. Okay. So it looks like they're both, uh, they're, especially with Westover coming out today, unfortunately, which would have been fairly amazing to see all three of them line up there. Um, along with horses like Shariar and people and horses like that, but but yeah, they're both they're both the favorites. They're co-favorites right now. Joint favorites. We just have a couple of minutes left, so we're going to skip the honorable mentions that we talked about. We'll get your second, Michael. We'll double you up for your second and your first. Vanessa, we'll get your number one, and we'll uh, let everybody get back about uh, their business on a during a very busy week here. Really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time, Michael. What's our next port of call? All right, both my second and first are going to be from Japan. Um, <laughs> Uspa Tesoro uh, is number two for me. I think that he's incredibly overlooked in the classic. His prep was perfect. His, breed, his uh, Dubai World Cup was was fairly in hand at the end of it. He won that fairly easily. Um, on Ragazins, he matches up with the best in America. He is the real deal. He's a 10 furlong horse. He just proved himself over a 7 furlong tight turn dirt track, and he cornered beautifully. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does at Santa Anita, and I'm hoping hoping I can get double digits on him. I love the case. Uh, we don't have the full form there on the At The Races site just yet. I'll, I'll see if I can dig and find some Japanese form for us to look at while you bring us to our next uh, and last uh, horse here. My last one is a filly that I love, or may or rather I, I love a lot, and I've made a lot of money on before, and I plan on doing it again. And this is Songline in the Breeders' Cup Mile. I don't think any horse going into the Breeders' Cup Mile can beat her if she's on song, so to speak, 
for the race. I think she's just really, really good. She has tactical speed. She's prepping this weekend in a nine furlong race that's turned up quite salty. The group two Mainichi Oken. Um, it's slightly out of her distance range, but I think that's purposely done to get her nice and fit for America. Uh, her last work was on video. Uh, you could find it on Twitter. It was it was eye catching. I just I just love her. She's very very tough, and she's a tiny bit overlooked right now because this race is so salty so far. The Breeders' Cup Mile, but I've seen her live twice. I've always been impressed with uh, how much class she shows, and I think that she's she's a for the players out there. Get your bets in early because when she turns up and people see her in person, she's gonna drop in price. Oh, internationals. like it. Internationals have that opportunity. I remember they were pointing last year. Something went awry. I flipped over for the Japanese form to the website humanity.jp. Just make sure you switch it to uh, English unless you're a, a Japanese reader, which I'm sure there are a couple of watching us here today. Um, that's a good place to, to get the full form and also just lots of great wagering uh, information in general as far as that goes. Vanessa, let's bring you back for uh, the last horse we're going to talk about on the show. Yeah, final horse for me in the number one slot in terms of horses I hope get on the plane and I hope run their race is Highfield Princess in the sprint division, the turf sprint. We've been here before with her when she ran at Keeneland last year. Wasn't one of her better performances, but she was far from disgraced either. Um, of the win in your in races, she recently won the Abbey, which is a win in your in for the turf sprint for the John Quinn yard. Jason Hart in the saddle. This story has been so well documented. Owner, breeder um, in the John Fairley operation, own the yard that John Quinn trains at. Big family, friends, love affair story. Uh, but Highfield Princess herself, multiple group one winner, done it in different countries thus far, yet to do it in America. And now this is, de I'm pretty confident this is her last season racing. Probably hasn't been her best, as you can see on that form in front of you. Um, last year, she went on that Group 1 winning spree, uh, spree, won three on the bounce before going to Keeneland. She didn't manage that this season. Things haven't gone quite right for her, but she's had excuses um, a couple of times that we've seen her, specifically at the Curra, and then she got back to winning ways in the Abbey from a draw that people said she couldn't win from, but she managed to all the same. She'll take on other win and you're in horses like the likes of living the dream and the Nunthorpe um, uh, who won the Nunthorpe and then the King stand winner. Is it Brad sell? I think is being aimed as well. So we'll have a few sprinters over there, but for me, the top spot has to go to Highfield princess, please run. And then when you love get it, there, I'd, love it. I'd love to see it. What a great story. Living the dream. Also, having an entry um, this weekend at Keeneland. Going to be amazing racing there. We'll have yeah. that all covered elsewhere on the network. Going to have these two back a lot more between now and the big day. Michael, Vanessa, thank you once again so much for joining us.